everyone, Kathy the Vegan Prepper here, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about dry shampoo, gross, greasy hair, and helping yourself look good even if you, for whatever reason, can't shower or wash your hair, and why it might matter. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it. Vegan Prepper. I'm possibly the realest of the real that I have ever been here. <laughs> <laughs> with my appearance on this channel. Not that I try very hard for a lot of my videos to make myself attractive for you. You've seen it before, but right now we are on about day six of no shower. So um, that is definitely not typical for me. I'm not, it's not like some weird flex. It's so funny. I think sometimes moms, it's like a weird flex, like, oh, it's been this long since I've had a shower. That's like supposed to prove something. I don't know. Anyway, but <laughs> for me, it's just been a crazy week. Um, Sage was sick. I was sick right on top of her. Like as soon as she started getting better, I got sick. Um, and then Adam has basically not been home all week. He's been working crazy hours this week. Um, and actually he just texted me and he was like, I feel like crap. He's like, hopefully I'm just tired. I was like, yeah, hopefully you're just tired because I better get my shower before he gets home because I might be taking care of a sick husband for the next couple days. So we don't even know. We don't even know. So anyway, it's just been a crazy week. So um, this is totally not typical for me, but I figured I've got some uh, f like freshly greasy hair for you all. Like, <laughs> like It's not fresh, right? This is like the opposite of fresh. It's so gross. Um, but I just wanted to show the power of dry shampoo and what it can do to your hair um, to help you possibly stretch out washes, um, whether this becomes a frugal trick, um, something again, that helps you stretch out maybe your shampoo supply or something that helps you to appear more clean. If you don't have access to water for washing, um, whether it's an emergency or, you know, you're like camping or something. Um, what I love about this too, is it's a homemade recipe. I've been doing this for many years and I have a secret ingredient, um, which I'm totally about to share with you. Um, that is more for dark hair. And so my ingredient is carob powder. It works for dark hair. Um, the reason it's a secret ingredient is because I've never in my life seen it listed as an option for ingredients for dry shampoo for darker hair. Usually you see cocoa. Um, it's equal parts of arrowroot starch, and carob powder is what mine is. Um, and it works for me. It does definitely dull my hair just a bit. Like it makes it look a little lighter, but to me, it doesn't make me feel like my hair looks powdered. Um, I know that apparently activated charcoal can be something that you can use to make it look darker. I just, I cannot even imagine trying to mess with that and put that in my hair. It is a mess. Activated charcoal is a disaster. As, as far as every time I've tried to use it in powdered form, it just somehow ends up everywhere. Um, so I'm sticking with carob. My husband has a chocolate allergy, which is why I originally decided to use carob instead of cacao. Um, just because, you know, I'll put it in my hair and I'll still go to sleep. Um, and I don't want to end up with, you know, we sleep in the same bed and I just, you know, I don't want to risk him coming in contact with it or whatever. And so I use carob powder. An unexpected awesome bonus of using the carob powder instead of cocoa is that when it kind of warms up, I want to say. So like say it's summer and I've put um, dry shampoo in my hair and I'm driving in my car and it's warm. I get out. I am basically surrounded by the smell of glorious carob, which has been described to me <laughs> over the last probably 10 or more years that I've been using this recipe. It has been described to me countlessly by countless different people as smelling of cookies. That's what I hear all the time. Ooh, it smells like cookies. Like somebody will say like as I walk in and they won't necessarily know that it's me or like if I hug someone at church, oh, you smell like cookies. What is that? And it gets awkward for a second because I want to tell them about my awesome dry shampoo recipe. But like, what am I supposed to say? I'm basically like, that's the, the glorious smell of my dirty hair is like basically what it is. And so it's just like, it's my dry shampoo is all I say. But yeah, it's just equal parts of some starch and um, carob powder. If you have extremely light hair, you can just get away with um, only cornstarch or arrowroot starch. I have not personally experimented with using any other form of starchy powder <clears throat> as far as uh, this recipe goes, like tapioca or whatever you make. Gosh, I'm, I'm still possibly dealing with a little bit of my um, leftover sickness stuff. So if my voice gets weird, that's what's going on. But anyway, um, I've never tried those other starches. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't experiment, but I have done it with 
cornstarch and arrowroot starch and it works perfectly. So let me shut up and actually get into putting this on my hair. I'm going to basically use this brush. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for many years um, and we've been focused on a lot of um, like zero waste type living kind of back before we knew of zero waste. Um, we've been focused on that for a long time. So this is before we went vegan, my husband got himself a shaving set. And so this is technically a boar hair bristle brush, which I obviously would not purchase anymore being vegan, but I already have it. So I'm going to use what I already have. Um, a lot of times when you see people apply it, um, they're just using like a regular makeup brush. So you just basically need some kind of brush and you're going to get the powder into your hair. And so, like I said, for me, it's just a mix of carob and arrowroot starch. And that is what it looks like. Um, yeah, it really does smell like cookies. It's delicious. You need to try making this with some carob if you have dark hair. Um, but it probably would still work on somewhat lighter hair, but I don't know that it would really work on like blonde hair. Basically, this is going to be a disaster in here. It's a disaster. Or not a disaster. That's a strong word, but um, it can get messy even in a bathroom, but it maybe is a little easier to just wipe up. But basically, I'm doing it in here because I don't really have space to film in my bathroom and I'm using my camera as the mirror. Uh, but I will just send my little vacuum in here to vacuum once I'm done. And so let's go ahead and just get this on my hair and, and see what we have. And then kind of when we come back, we can talk a little bit about why I think this might be important, even like in a prepping situation. So... I will go ahead and do this for you. So basically the gist of it is you dip the brush in and actually, honestly, I'm looking at this like a little makeup brush would probably be easier. You get some and then I like to sort of tap it to get rid of excess back into the jar. Um, and then what you have on your brush, you just sort of start brushing into your hair, especially um, the kind of the greasiest spots of your hair, which for me tend to be right here, like over my ears, kind of right under and especially kind of the back of my head for whatever reason. Those, those are my spots that seem to get the greasiest and I definitely concentrate a lot there. But you aim primarily for the roots, even though I'll go a little bit into my hair and then you brush it through. So we'll come back, but I, I will let you see the process, but that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, so as you go, um, you can kind of feel like you can run your fingers through your hair as you're doing it. And you can actually feel the spots that are still kind of extra greasy, which is what I was just doing at the end there. If you could see like back here, actually it still feels greasy, which is not surprising because, oh my gosh, this is bad. I don't think my hair has ever been this bad when I've been doing this. Um, but you sort of, you just, just sort of can feel it. Um, and it's really kind of miraculous. It's weird. Like, I, I don't know if you can already see a difference, um, in how my hair looks as far as the, the look or the appearance anyway, of not just being purely greasy anymore. And oh my gosh, it's still greasy over here. So like my little, my little cut out there didn't really do anything, huh? I'm like still working at it, <laughs> but basically I'm going to go ahead and stop. This is not going to necessarily be perfect. Like I said, I am washing it out later, but still, I just thought I would demonstrate so that you could see it on genuinely greasy and gross hair. Um, and you could see what the results look like after, like even this already, it's, it's more put together. Um, I know that I have very damaged ends. That's like a conversation for another time. Basically, nobody's getting near my hair anytime soon, but <laughs> we're not gonna talk about it specifically because I will rant and I don't want this video to be very long. So when I comb it out, I love to comb it out um, using a wooden comb just because, or a wooden um, brush because it does not leave behind, um, leave behind static electricity is that something that you can leave behind no it doesn't generate static electricity but 
If you need to use just like a plastic comb or whatever, that's totally fine as well, um, whatever your situation is. But I have this cute little wooden brush, so I'm just gonna go ahead and brush through. Um, and we will sort of see what we end up with. One thing to possibly look out for if you have greasy hair, it is possible you also have somewhat greasy skin. So definitely wash your face, right? <laughs> Do a little bit of something. Um, like, like I said, I haven't gotten my shower, but I have at least kind of done some water on my face occasionally and took, taken care of some of it. But like if you have greasy skin, you can end up with like a little bit of it kind of on the edges. Um, but thankfully that's not what I'm dealing with right now. It's actually really hard to see in the mirror. But I do my middle part. And here we are. I feel like slightly insecure too, like lifting up my arms in front of the camera. Um, but yes, here we are. And it's definitely not perfect, but it's definitely far better than it was. Okay, so now we have hair. Then I sort of tend to fluff it a bit, kind of come up and I get in here and I kind of do this to just fluff the roots a bit and then at the same time use my fingers to kind of gather it to put it back together a bit and I don't know I feel like there is a big difference um, in the way that it looks compared to what it was right it's it's like softer looking and cleaner looking and not nearly as greasy and gross so why on earth would this be important why am I bringing this up as a kind of prep thing. And for me, obviously, like I said, if you lose access to your water, if you use ac lose access to, um, or if you just don't have, again, access to water to keep your hair clean, or if you have access to water, but for whatever reason it's limited and you don't want to use water to clean your hair, but you still would like to appear put together, <laughs> this is a great thing. Um, a lot of times too, like I won't wear it down. I will degrease my hair and then I'll put it up or I'll braid it or something. And then I still look better. Um, the grease is no longer, you know, this the primary thing you see on my hair. Um, and I still look cleaner and better. So you can see, um, I don't know if you can tell, it's maybe a little bit subdued in color. Uh, but like I said, I don't believe it ends up looking powdered. Uh, the way that this works is the starch itself kind of binds to the grease and then ends up possibly coming out, uh, but just sort of binds it up so that it doesn't, you know, force your hair to stick together anymore. And so that's part of the beauty of how this works. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, the thing that comes to my mind as far as a prepping type thing and why would this be important to know? Well, for one thing, um, because it's like all natural kind of food ingredients, I feel like you can use it in any situation, no matter where you are. You don't have to worry about it getting into waterways or anything like that. It's a very natural and beautiful thing. Um, but then there's this other thing that hits me as very important that I'm gonna go ahead and call, even though I've never seen this or heard this anywhere. I'm gonna call it the cleanliness bias. Um, I tend to think, and this is definitely proven, that people are attracted to, and not necessarily only, um, we're not talking about only like physical or um, relational attraction. I'm talking about just like um, uh, friendliness or, or like, like desire even to help, desire to um, have a person in your circle, you know, that can be increased possibly if the people are clean. You can think about yourself if you were possibly in a situation. Are you going to invite people who look scraggly and dirty into your circle? Now, hopefully all of us would be, and I hope that doesn't sound horrible, but I just, just like talk. Let's talk about reality and the way that people are and kind of the way that we're programmed to be. We're drawn to people who are more like us. We're drawn to people who are more also like what we would like to be ourselves. We are drawn to those kinds of people. I believe that we as a species, not necessarily even to, to be jerks, hopefully we are compassionate in all situations, but not even to be a jerk, hopefully, uh, we're sort of naturally repulsed or maybe that's a strong word, but we are repelled by 
uncleanliness, by poor hygiene. Um, not, I think, necessarily just because of the grossness factor. Maybe that's it for some people, but I think it's like we're programmed somewhere inside of us <laughs> to recognize um, that this is kind of where, where disease breeds. Um, if somebody looks like they have gross, like greasy hair, you're thinking maybe um, lice might be involved, even though it's funny that, that actually that the opposite might be true. It seems like lice like clean hair, not greasy hair. <laughs> but um, the, like actually one of my friends, <laughs> this is a, like a, a long, it's, a, it's an aside, but it was an interesting thing for me to learn. Um, she lost her AC. Um, I don't know whenever we had lice in our house because i've talked about on the channel that we got lice and it, was a, it was a nightmare that's why i think every every bug out bag on earth needs to have a lice comb because you never know what kind of situations you're going to end up with in and the dirtiness and what you might need um and so absolutely a lice comb is tiny and it doesn't take up space and it's not heavy just put it in there if you end up with lice even just physical removal can stay on top of it as long as you stay on top of it like at least once a day comb it out you will eventually rid yourself of lice it can take a long time but you will um and so anyway uh my friend she lost her ac and i was like oh my gosh that's miserable right you can't be without ac here um in hot months and i said look you can come over and i can set up a bed for you but i have to warn you we have lice in our house right now and we're, we're on top of it. I think that they're gone, but just so that you know, it's been very recent or whatever. And she just laughed and she was, she didn't end up taking me up on my offer, but she actually laughed and she, cause she's black and she said, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> but, um, it's not something that I would even have to worry about because she's like, black people don't get lice. And I don't, I don't know a hundred percent if that is 100% true, but she says it's because of the oils that they put in their hair, um, that the lice don't, come to their hair. Um, and so I thought that was really interesting, but, um, she did end up having like an emergency fix to her AC. So she didn't have to come over. Um, so yeah, praise God. She got her AC fixed pretty quickly, <clears throat> but yeah, I did offer to her. Um, but it was just an, a nugget and I thought that was a really interesting piece of information. So regardless, I think that we're kind of programmed to not like being around, um, people who look dirty or people who look unclean. I, I think that we can have compassion. I think it's easier, let, like, you know, paint a picture. It's easier right now for us to have compassion on people who have fallen on hard times and, and have kind of hygiene challenges um, so that we, we might be able to help them. I know like with the homeless um, ministries at church, big, big ticket items that they want for the homeless are like shampoos and deodorants just to help um just to help them, right? To help them uh, get ready a lot of times for job interviews or whatever. Like we're called to minister and be kind to people who are in bad situations. I'm by, I'm in no means meaning to shame people who are dealing with this. But again, thinking of an emergency situation, we could be more poised to be compassionate right now because we know we can go home and get a shower. We can get clean. Um, and we still get to go back to our clean area. <laughs> but if we were in some situation, um, say, you know, like after Katrina hit and all the people, so many people got taken over actually to, I believe the Astrodome, um, in Houston, my uncle lived there at the time and he and my aunt went into the Astrodome to help, um, and try to do things. They bought pillows, they bought all kinds of stuff to come in and help people, but it was a disaster. It was a, just a disaster of humanity um, all together. And of course, people need proper sanitation. Thinking of if you're in a situation where you don't have access to your own sanitation, are you going to be as likely to welcome somebody who appears like really filthy? Um, it, it's just a question to think about. And again, it's not about being insensitive. It's kind of thinking about how important it probably will be for your own survival, possibly for the survival of your family in an emergency situation to maintain at least the appearance of proper hygiene. Um, and so something like a dry shampoo to make sure that nobody looks like they have gross, greasy hair, um, help you guys look clean, help you guys look good. Maybe it could end up being something that can help in a bad situation. Um, even if it doesn't end up being like that, just psychologically for your own good to be able to at least appear to be clean. Um, 
I imagine it would be so helpful. So those are sort of the things that I think about, but yeah, it's super, super easy recipe, just equal parts for me. Um, arrowroot and carob, and yeah, you just end up smelling like cookies. It's a bonus <laughs> if you use the carob. But if you don't have carob, then just use cocoa and it's fine. Um, or again, if you have really light hair, then just stick with the arrowroot. Um, and so that's all you need in a brush and you saw the process and hopefully it helps you out. Um, I have, I will say one last thing. Um, if you add essential oils to it, I, I've just experienced nothing but clumping for myself. Um, so I don't use any essential oils anymore. I just do the powders. Um, and yeah, that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and that was informative or made you think, um, if you give this a shot or if you have your own recipes for your own, uh, hair powders or whatever to help yourself get through wash days or for, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, times when you won't have access to water for washing your hair or making your hair look washed. Um, actually, I, I think it does do some cleanliness. Like I said, the starch binds to the oils. And as you brush, some of it's falling out. It's actually getting some of the grease out of your hair. Um, but over time, if you don't do any cleansing of your scalp, it can build up and then you might end up with kind of itchy scalp and stuff. So it's kind of important to balance both things out. The brushing is very important to get into your scalp. Um, to try to remove some of it from your scalp um, and then just to sort of keep everything healthy. So brushing or combing is very important with this process. Um, but anyway, yeah, I guess that's all. I'm going to actually leave now. Hopefully that was helpful. And as always, I hope the rest of your day is good and your life stays wonderful. And now I think I'm going to get a shower. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited. Quick aside, because you know I can't even say goodbye to you people. You're so so wonderful. I just love being with you as long as I can. Uh, but I just wanted to throw in a couple of extra details about the experience that my uncle had when he went to the Astrodome to help some of the people that were sheltering there from Katrina. Now, granted, they've lost a lot, um, but he actually faced a lot of abuse and a lot of uh, vitriol. Thank thankfully, nothing like physical or anything, but people were fighting over the pillows. Um, he, I, as far as I understand, they, you know, there was like lists going out of things that people needed because they were being fed. They did have shelter, but it was things like I mentioned with the homeless ministry, like a lot of people immediately go to food, but sometimes it's kind of those just general necessities that we don't even think about. Like pillows is, is a big deal. Um, clean, clean stuff like that, just clean bedding, clean, uh, or ability to clean yourself, hygiene type products, like I mentioned with the homeless uh, ministries at church, deodorant, things like that. Those are the kinds of things that a lot of people don't really think about when they think about disasters, um, toilet paper and stuff like that. Um, not to bring up toilet paper again, but you know, um, but basically he did, he faced a lot of abuse. Um, he got cussed out by a lot of people. Uh, people were fighting over the, what he had brought. Um, and he, he just left feeling kind of deflated and kind of disgusted. It was like not a single person was grateful. Um, and again, granted, they've been through a lot, but I don't think it doesn't matter. You, you shouldn't abuse people. I, I feel like you can go through a lot and be in pain, but the second you, you abuse and hurt people, I'm no longer on your side. <laughs> if we just like get really real here about some of what makes me tick <laughs> as a person. Um, and so I, I, yeah, it was just, just sad. And I was thinking as I was looking at the video and kind of editing it that I should probably share that because it's not only about the cleanliness of, you know, your appearance, but to be clean as much as possible in your spirit and in your heart. Um, portray gratitude. Do everything that you can to keep being the person that another person will want to help. I guarantee you, if there had been somebody who was just like, thank you, whatever, that my uncle probably would have helped them first, <laughs> you know? So it's just something to keep in mind, you know, even when you're in a horrible situation, um, yeah, stuff to sort of keep in mind ahead of time. Um, anyway, those are just my thoughts and yeah, I'm really leaving now. So anyway, hopefully you got something good out of that. Bye for real. <laughs>